ladies and gentlemen, Emma gave you the reason women were going to go to these zones. When you soaked capital that previously had been invested in things like subsidies, when you soaked political capital that had been invested in things like anti-discrimination law, and you said that this was the signature output for the achievement of women, you told them to go there. Also in many of the societies that are like, this debate was about more than Saudi Arabia, which CG spent the entirety of their case talking about. It was about women everywhere. It was about the trajectory that they wanted to have. And what we told you was that if, that zones, if, if those zones worked, we thought they were going to come at massive social cost that mean even if you got some economic gain, on balance, women were going to be worse off and more segregated, but also quite likely, those zones were going to be really shit and women were going to be worse off for them. Two issues in this speech. Firstly, how will this play out and what's the comparative mechanism? Secondly, what are the costs of this policy? What do we hear from the beginning? OG told us this. 90% of property is owned by men. All of the top, to, oh, no thank you, all of the top corporations are owned by men. And we told you this, that we thought when those male-owned firms invested in those areas, it would have to be an interest. That an enormous amount of return on, on, on that work, no thank you, had to go to them. That the development in that area would have to be more valuable for the male-owned firms than the female in it, just to get incentive, <laughs> to, just to incentivize people to go in. No thank you. Then what did they say it looked like? They were like, well, we're going to have women in management positions, but also semi-skilled manual labour. We do have industries that are all women. They look like the garment industries in Bangladesh, where women have not had that much development. And to the extent that you do have women in management positions, we thought our opening was reasonably clear. They were obviously going to be the most privileged. And that was harmful, because it told women that those were the ones who were most worthy, no thank you, that feminism was most relevant to them. But the biggest problem in all of the government's case was this. Their sole logic relied on women having more economic gain and that leading to mass social advancement. But the question was, given the trajectory of our society where women were getting more economic gain, why haven't we got the corollary or like as, as much social advancement as they said? Why did just a little bit more cash do it? Because we thought segregating men and women entirely on the basis of gender, saying differential treatment was legitimised, would be a massively right. harmful thing that even if they had a little bit more money was bad. What do we bring in extension though? Firstly, we told you that the competition was going to be difficult, like, like the special economic zones probably weren't going, weren't going to be all that great. We thought there was a number of outcomes. Firstly, let's say these businesses do work, now they are incredibly threatening to the large number of male businesses and have to actively compete against them. That is literally like gender economic conflict that you are now propagating. Yeah. No thank you. We don't think that's going to lead the men whose, who, whose jobs may come at the cost of this competition to be more sympathetic to the plight of women, to feel like they have connections with them when they have to compete with them on the day to day. But more likely they look like the special economic zones in China, where you do things like massively push to lower production costs, yeah. no thank you, subjugate the work in order to get the most, extract the most economic benefit. That was going to hurt women more. It was particularly going to hurt women more because it legitimised that practice and said that it wasn't on the basis of gender, that that was how economics, no thank you, operated. The second thing we brought you an extension was this policy necessarily removed the existing projects that we had. We needed to have a realistic trajectory in this debate. We weren't going to get Sweden everywhere, but we thought the trajectory in many societies was, 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 in, was improving, and this policy sucked capital away. But most importantly, this didn't Point. change the culture, no thank you, of society. Because this debate was as much about improving the plight of women as it was about changing the behaviour of men and leading men to a reflection that meant that they didn't treat women in that way no longer. This absolutely didn't do that. What was the comparative we heard? OG told us that women in our, uh, under our side have to masculinise. Firstly, we question to the extent to which that's true. We point to the far increasing trajectory of women who don't have to, who can have children and get those positions. But importantly, we think it's a good thing that women challenge the idea that certain behaviours are exclusively the domain of men. No, thank you. That, that men are the only ones who are allowed to adopt it. Finally, they said, well, look, separatism is not as bad as male promotion. And, and like, charged us with tokenism. We thought, firstly, even if there may be a small amount of tokenism to begin with, the trajectory of more and more women in those management positions utterly broke that. They were not tokenistic, when slowly every corporation had it. But most importantly, you change the perspective of men. Because on their side, men never have to go to these special right. economic zones. They never actually have to see what's going on there. They yeah. never have to engage with it. Why did you get it? Importantly, though, they didn't change the economic incentives, which were the cause of a lot right. of that. So, no, thank you. What, did that, what, what change did we say we got on our side? Firstly, we point to things like the economic failure in Japan 
created mass economic incentives for men to change their behaviour. That said a model where men were exclusively allowed to operate in business was not tenable in the future and that you actually have to create sufficient incentives. We also pointed secondly to the increasing, like, increasing development, no thank you, of women. In many countries it was incremental. They told us that we get better, like they get better maternal leave policies. Firstly, we told you not all women have children, but now competitively the corporations that operate in that sphere have a massive disadvantage to the entire male corporations that don't have anyone. That's an economic cost. They're not likely to bear when they do have to compete to survive and bring turns to women yeah. over. Most women don't have careers, they have jobs. The forms of discrimination they experience are things like implicit bias about their physical capacities and about pregnancy. At least when they are the only available labour force, they are certain to get a job and not be fired on the basis of those. Discrimination is lessened even if it's not eliminated. No, it's not. You don't, you don't change the implicit biases because you just shut them off. You never get men to confront that bias. You just legitimise it. And importantly, for women who now go back, to, like if those special economic zones don't work, if women go back, they now legitimise the behaviour they subject themselves to. That's massively harmful. What are the costs of this policy? We got the extension that they get more social agitation, and they pointed to women in Saudi Arabia who worked in, like fighting, you know, pushing to drive. That's the example of women in a male sphere saying they can actualise like things men do quite effectively. That's the exact sort of development we support. No, thank you. But you don't get the social development when it becomes an entirely different sphere. When you divert capital and visibility to one area, like women's services. <coughs> That, men, that mean that you just entirely shut it off. You also don't challenge the idea that CG brought that there are stereotypical male jobs because now there are literally female jobs because females are the only ones allowed to have them. We thought, like, we thought you also had massive harm. Firstly, economic participation changed. You created fear and instant animosity amongst men who now have to compete with women. You got ideological loss because you got lost the idea from third wave feminism that men actually, that women could have different aims. And you got mass segregation. Even though it still exists, you entrench it far more. If that's a harm, you, like, your, your side gets far more of that harm. What we brought you is this. The special economic zones were likely not to function as they thought. They were going to compete with male firms, which bred more animosity and entrench the biases that that side wanted to, wanted, wanted to fight. We thought it was better to allow the market to work, to create incentives for men to change. That's how we actually got the increased the, the, like, you know, stance of women we oppose. <laughs>